just a little while longer. This, this happens way too much. Every time I step out of the house, I understand why my mother gets, she's afraid every single time. People are really hurting, okay? Loved ones are being killed out here. There's, there needs to be a lot of change. And I know change doesn't come so quickly overnight. I understand that. But there needs to be a change. Don't shoot! Hands up, don't shoot! Hands up, don't shoot! Hands up! <laughs> The third precinct of the Minneapolis Police Department, on fire. Chaos, clashes, protests, they've all intensified in Minneapolis where activists are demanding justice for George Floyd. He is the black man who died after being arrested by police. Minnesota State Police and the National Guard lining the streets this morning, and this all comes after protesters rallied for a third day in a row. Anger over Floyd's death, police brutality, and racism have fueled the unrest. The sanctuary that we're sitting in uh, served as the medic site for the demonstrators who filled the streets with righteous anger in the days and nights that followed the police murder of George Floyd. Community members who had been intimately impacted uh, by the uprising started meeting on the church's front lawn. And then as the days went on and the weeks went on, we started to talk about ways that we could mobilize as a community to build back a neighborhood that was even more committed to principles of equity. And Mina often brought up this, this sense of wanting to create a a neighborhood where people experience belonging. So it really became a space for all of us to talk to each other. Um, I think quite a bit of healing went on during that time as well and reflect on what happened so that we could build back with equity and justice. And out of, the, out of that conversation, this organization called Longfellow Rising came, came about. And we wanted to build back in a way that uh, really took the community's view into account. We wanted to build back in, the way, in a way that people felt belonging in this neighborhood. So Mina had called me um, and was sharing a project idea that she and Ingrid um, were discussing as part of the Longfellow Rising. And it was looking into having an art project that would help the community heal and recover from the uprising that had occurred after the murder of George Floyd. And they were looking for an artist to lead that community engaged art piece and Ingrid had talked about a butterfly and how a butterfly transforms. That vision then took the form of a cocoon, um, which was a vessel for the community to share their hopes and dreams and laments um, and just vision of moving forward in their healing. And when we first broke ground, um, we, we did that, you know, the days after the anniversary of George Floyd's murder and we had community coming off of this from the street that were like looking for something to do, looking for some way to acknowledge the anniversary and everything that they had experienced here in this neighborhood, which was different than what had happened down, you know, at the actual site. I live right around here. This is where I raise my babies. This is our sort of Longfellow downtown. Um, yeah, and I didn't realize how much I needed to be part of rebuilding and healing, not only with my work and my I don't know, organizing, but also it's just like putting plants in the ground. That manual labor of digging and planting and watering and preparing the ground, it, um, to me it was almost a reminder of, you know, as a Native American, we hold like powwows, which is like a community gathering. 
And prior to the start of the powwow, our grass dancers would come into the arena and they would uh, dance to stomp down the grass to prepare it for the, uh, the dancers that would be coming in during the powwow. So to me, that was kind of a significant tie in a connection with my culture um, as a Dakota person from this land to be able to provide an opportunity for the community to be able to be part of preparing the ground for this site uh, where the sculpture was going to live. The liquor store directly opposite the third precinct had burned during the uprising fires. And so we asked the liquor store owners who were in the process of pre-development whether or not they would be open to this uh, art piece living on their parcel for a number of months. At least 20,000 cars pass by that location every day on Lake Street. So as the cocoon took shape, uh, whether people were on foot or on bikes or uh, however they were traveling up and down Lake Street in Minnehaha, they had the opportunity to see life being born uh, on that particular corner. My name is Suzanne Victoria Cross. I am very excited to be stage managing and holding this project. And just wanting to share really quickly that this space, this corner, has become to mean so much to me. Um, being here to water, being here to watch the beautiful art that Angela's created happen here, and meeting the most incredible people. And a lot of them are here. Shirley is one of them. <laughs> incredible people that I've met here that have just changed me from just watering a corner. I hate violence. We hurt each other, but why? Pain stabs back at us. My neighbors and friends offered help, hope, service, love. We grow in new strength. So that's what I wrote. <laughs> the vibe is beautiful. I mean, oh man, it just, it's, it's everlasting thing. It's not even no limit. It's not even, you can limit it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody should be global within. We come from so far. It's just, everybody's the same, basically. I mean, I don't even have no limit. I'm just glad we all woke up. We got a chance to even um, do this as far as just being around, doing things together. But uh, this event is way overdue. It's interesting because like a, a, a caterpillar goes through a really messy process to like go into that cocoon and it's just like kind of period in time where it's like in a holding pattern as it's like inside of it. It's doing all of this work to come out as this you know new form, this new butterfly. So it felt really poignant to have this piece be showing like what this community was in, was in that transition stage of in that cocoon structure, doing kind of that internal messy work and it was gonna come out the community itself was going to be coming out as this butterfly. As we were driving past, we actually saw people just sitting outside, sitting on the concrete benches right uh, near the cocoon and just reading. Kids would come there and play. And uh, I remember having the longest conversation with Angela Two Stars uh, kid, her girl, who you have to meet her, she's quite a talker. <laughs> she would, I had the funniest conversations with her. Um, and it was just really, uh, I feel like, uh, especially for a community that was starved of a uh, company and was so isolated during these COVID times, it was a space of gathering, of coming together, of just joy. And as, as I was looking across at the structure, I saw love and hope and people and uh, spaces and, all, you know, just, just this really spirit. It just really warmed my heart when I was looking at this uh, structure. And I know that that simply would not have been possible without the people, every single person here who was involved. When I drive by, I see people sitting on these benches and it's brought like a, a life and a feeling of um, connectedness. And I keep thinking about what Tony Cade Bambara says when they say that the job of the artist is to make the revolution irresistible. And I feel pretty irresistible right now. I feel like people want to be in this circle. I have enjoyed coming here to support this work beautiful work and it really has uh, made a difference for me in writing Esperanza. I'm so honored to be a part of this circle 
Um, it's a very special circle because it's a circle of imagination. What I will remember out of this whole thing is the relationships that we have made. And I'm really committed uh, to continuing the relationship. And a gentleman who's in a wheelchair came, came up and was just sitting near the, the, in the parking lot. I just came up, I was watering, and we started having a conversation. And he wa used to um, wash windows at the liquor store that was here. There was an accident that he was in during the unrest, and that's why he was in a wheelchair. And he still, every morning, came to the spot because this is where his, his job was. And then having to watch this through his eyes where then there was benches that came, and then flowers came, and then the structure came, and he kept coming to this spot. Um, while we were watering, not able to really come to any of the events, but able to come here during the day. So just, that's what's in my heart, is that even the things we don't see, even though y'all didn't see him or meet him, he knows you, you know him, he is in this space, he's in this cocoon. You know, considering I only live two blocks away, it's uh, really good to see people who want to see change and, you know, who will come together and make this place, you know, a better place, a hope. After the cocoon, form came down um, in like mid-October. I had collected all of the strips of vinyl that the people had been, that the people had contributed during the public engagement. And then I've been stitching them together um, to form a large canvas. I will be using the back side of it to create a butterfly mural. And then that is going to be put into this larger artwork that will like live permanently at Pangeo World Theater and it's kind of a snapshot in time of what the community had gone through during that period. To be able to create a space that allowed people to express those emotions I think it was really helpful and why there's a need to have these healing spaces because um, there's kind of strength that's shared and hope for moving forward. When imagination is thin, Pangea reminds me like there is another world that's possible. One author says uh, on, on good days we can hear this other world breathing. Mm -hmm. This project gave me just like that one little whisper of like the other world breathing. Thank you.